The Pac-12 is still looking for a new media rights deal to extend from 2024 onward. And of course, the conference would also love to maintain that prime real estate of the late window on Saturday. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with you. And based on your participation, we provide, you know it, the best discussion, debate, and analysis of college football. We uh, unveiled a series last week. We looked at the five conferences and their performance on television in 2022, and we wrapped it all up with a compilation series. So please check out those videos. Now, by request, we look at the late night window and the Pac-12 performance in the late night window. We got to figure, hey, ESPN Fox, that's got to be where the Pac-12 has got to be going into the future because that's, of course, where they've got no competition and where their viewers are enjoying in prime time on the West Coast, 1030 on the East Coast. So we now take a look at uh, the late night games, and this is everything after 930 Eastern time throughout the 2022 season and how the Pac-12 did against everyone else. And basically they're competing against the Mountain West, so they better dominate in future episodes we will look at the other broadcast windows in weeks zero and one it's oregon state boise state with the top performance in the late night with over a million views and uh, right there tied with colorado and tcu both of those games on espn of course the buffs and the horn frogs had no competition on a friday night those were the 13th and 14th highest rated games of the weekend as you will see that the pac-12 and late night windows don't do top 10 ratings for the most part just a couple games throughout the season made their way into the top 10 for that particular week in week two we've got a baylor byu game and that's exactly what we see right there a non-pac 12 game played after 9 30 at night that was our cutoff point 9 30 eastern kickoff baylor byu on espn was the seventh highest rated game of the week that's the best performance by any late night game in terms of where it ranked that particular week with almost 2.5 million views, followed by Arizona and Mississippi State on FS1. When we go to week three, we're going to throw in just a kind of a comparison here with Miami and Texas A&M. A much anticipated game was that was the third ranked game of the week. Now it did kick off at 9 Eastern, 9 ESPN. And again, our cutoff is 930, but just wanted to give you a comparison right there at 3.4 million. USC and Fresno State on Fox. The highest rated game of the week in the late night window at 1.62 million. And then the other two games barely cleared 300,000 viewers. In week four, we've got Utah and Arizona State getting together on ESPN at 1.2 million. That was the 13th ranked game of the week, followed by Stanford and Washington on FS1 at 532,000. Of course, those ESPN broadcast windows are prime for the Pac 12 and typically get. 1 million plus views and then when you see when the games are on FS1 in particular with Fox rarely doing a late night Pac-12 game we see that as we go through the season in week five we've got a Friday night tilt Washington UCLA exciting game two big opponents on ESPN again it was by itself on a Friday night and performed well but not as well as a game between Arizona State and USC Not nearly as good a game, but at 1.92 million views with USC pulling in the crowd. That was the ninth highest ranked game of the week. Stanford, Oregon, another Pac-12 game on FS1. As we move it on to week six, we've got Oregon State and Stanford. That was an exciting game that went down to the wire with over a million views. The 15th highest ranked game of week six. And then you see a couple Mountain West games with three and 400,000 viewers at numbers 22 and 24 that week. In week eight, we just have a couple games and one involving the Pac-12 as they play the rest of their schedule earlier in the day. That was Washington and Cal on ESPN at 1.32 million, a decent showing with a top 10 ranked game. One of the very few, there's only a handful throughout the season from the Pac-12 in that late night window. In week nine, we've got Stanford and UCLA on ESPN at 1.26 million. And again, another top 10 finish for the Pac-12. And then we've got a Thursday night affair between Utah and Washington State on FS1 at 470,000. That was a top 20 ranked game. Moving on to week 10, we've got Cal and USC. Not much of a game there from ESPN, but at the same time, people were watching it 2 million plus. One of the few to break that barrier, the eighth ranked game of the week, Oregon State, Washington. That was a tremendous game. Two really good teams playing on a Friday night at 1.13 million. So make the comparison there. 
better game, Oregon State, Washington, no competition on a Friday night, and got about just over half the audience of USC. And so that's what the Pac-12 is losing with USC going to the Big Ten. Now let's move it on to week 11. And is this the only appearance from Fox on the entire schedule concerning the Pac-12? Arizona, UCLA, the top-ranked late-night game of that week, number 11 overall at $1.86 million. Stanford, Utah, there you see on ESPN at just over a million. And then on a Friday night, Colorado and USC battled at the Coliseum. Not much of a battle. FS1 aired that one at 525000 In Week 12, we had a tremendous game between Utah and Oregon on ESPN, and that was the highest, most-viewed game in that late window for the entire season at 2.54 million and ranked eighth that week. Then we've got the Mountain West chiming in at numbers 25 and 28. And then to close out the 2022 season, we've got another fine performance out of the Pac-12 in regards to relative to the rest of the performance. Uh, Washington, Washington State, Apple Cup game, ESPN, late night, 2.38 million. That was the 12th most watched game in college football on rivalry weekend. So it's the Pac-12 after dark, and uh, the ratings and the rankings have to be taken into consideration in that, what's their competition? It's the Mountain West. Well, at the same time, they're losing most of the country because people are going to bed. Most people that watch college football are guys like me. They're like 35 to 65 male, and uh, they don't stay up up nearly as late as I do. So let's consider that. Uh, But this is the Pac-12 prime territory because they can take hold of that and really cap off the college football day. And this is what they need to maintain, something they've had for decades. ESPN, Fox, FS1, ESPN2, let's stay uh, with the Pac-12 in the late night window. But as we see right there with USC and UCLA popping up a number of times and USC having that uh, showing against Cal and against Arizona State, really showing the Trojans pull because that was not the Sun Devils and the Golden Bears bringing in the that audience that bad news for the Pac-12, USC and UCLA are leaving. Double bad news for the Pac-12 would be that USC and UCLA, though playing their major opponents, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and so forth, earlier in the day, those are not going to be 10 p.m. or 10.30 starts Eastern time. But UCLA, Minnesota, USC, Illinois, expect Uh, The Big Ten Network in particular to be showing those games and to become a major factor on the West Coast. And so that's bad news for the Pac-12. We will check out the noon window, 3.30 Eastern, and the primetime window in later videos. So keep it right here at your destination for college football discussion, debate, and analysis, the voice of college football.